Hello everyone, today we are going to see exception topic quickly. Remember again, as I am telling in every uh, video of this series, that these all or all videos are only for revision. So this is a quick checklist of every important topic of exception. Now, what, what would be the definition of exception? Any abnormal condition in a program is called as exception. In this topic, we will be learning in this topic, we will be learning these five keywords. These five keywords. Try, then catch, then finally throw and throws. We are going to discuss one by one everything, every keyword. These are five keywords in the exception. So we need to discuss them. So, first of all, I want to tell you all people, if any exception arises, doesn't mean that by exception handling you can solve that problem you cannot solve you can handle it if your program was getting terminated it will stop terminating you can avoid the termination but it's not like if you are doing 5 divided by 0 which is exceptional case in java and if you are expecting that you should get infinity out of it it's not possible it is just handling, it is just avoiding termination. Now, this try, catch, finally, throw, throws have different combinations that we all are going to see. Remember, try block is a first block, okay? So, try block should be followed by catch block. You can see in this diagram. Try block should be followed by multiple catch. Again, you can see here in this, what you are seeing, multiple catch block. Try can be followed by finally block. You can see here. Try can be followed by multiple catch as well as finally block. Again, you can see in this diagram. So these are the various combinations we have. Let's see various combinations I'm going to uh, showing here. This will be very much helpful for beginners as well as for expert. So this is first combination, which is which is not allowed. Why? Because it's only try. Without catch and finally you cannot have only try. It must be followed as I said by catch block or at least finally block. Something should be there. You can see now this second combination. I have try, then catch, and then finally, and I have handled one of the exceptions there. That is exception class, which is allowed. Then go, uh, I'm going for next scenario I'm showing here. What do you see here? Try, then catch, then finally, and then again catch, which is not possible. As catch is followed by finally, but it should be followed by try block. See, where you are seeing here finally, after catch block, that's correct. But after finally, you have catch block. That's why it's here. error. Next. You can see here try block with three catch. First catch is of null pointer. Another catch is having arithmetic exception and next catch having exception. If you look at this hierarchy, exception is a bigger exception. Exception class is used, which is a bigger exception than arithmetic and null pointer, which is allowed, very much allowed. Now see next example, which is opposite of what we seen just now here. First I wrote exception, then I wrote null pointer exception. What will happen here? Any exception occurs in the try block will be, will be absorbed, will be handled by first catch only. And that's why Java says, no, that's not possible. You should give option to another catch as well. Every exception will be paused and handled by first catch block only. So this is restricted. This will give compiled error, compiled time error in Java. Next uh, scenario you can see, this is a nested try catch block. You can see here try, then catch, and inside catch block I have try catch. That's possible, very much possible in Java, that happens. Many a times we feel inside catch there should be exception. No, it's not like that, it can have anything. Try catch block inside try catch block, it's possible. In finally, also you can have try catch combination. In try also, you can have another try catch combination. All combinations are possible. Now, little complex examples we'll see. 
will bring loop here in between. See this example. I have method having for loop and inside for loop I have try catch. And inside try you can see I have one printing statement that's easy one one one. But here this is the exceptional case that is one by zero. What happened? Exception will occur here. And as soon as exception comes, it goes into the catch block. But remember, for loop is ending after catch block. Catch block will be handling that exception. Then again it goes to for loop and it will go on, go on, go on until for loop over. So you can see output here. What happens? 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3 comes so on 100 times. Now consider this example. Here were, what is happening and earlier what was happening, try comparing. Here I have for loop inside try block. So as soon as exception occurs in the try block, it directly goes into catch block. But, but for loop is over now. It will come out of the for loop. So what will be the output? 1, 1, 1 and 3, 3, 3. Observe it very carefully, exception occurs, but it will not go on like a for loop. Why? Because as soon as exception occurs, it looks for try block, and once it gets a try block, it directly reaches to catch block, and that's it, it's executed. Now there is no bracket for for loop, you can see here. In earlier case, thing was different, in this case, thing was different. I'm going to explain business use case as well with this. There will be this business use case is used in many scenarios. Whenever there is a bulk data insertion or deletion, let's say Consider I have 100 children. I'm trying to insert them into database. Now my requirement is of inserting these 100 children to database subject to the condition that if there is any issue in insertion of any student, it should not impact the other student. Means if one student is inserted, in another student inserted, no problem. Third student have problem means that should not get inserted but fourth student no problem it should get inserted fifth student inserted sixth student inserted eighth student problem no issue ninth student should get inserted see here what i have used what i used i have try catch inside for loop i have try catch inside for loop it will go on whatever student have a problem it reaches to catch block then after that it have for loop no requirement is changed. I want to add again 100 students, but what it says, if any student have problem, entire system should get stopped. Entire insertion should get stopped. Means my for loop should not run. And see what I did here. See this logic, read those comments. I have for loop, but that is inside try. If anything fails in the try block, that is in the for loop, it directly goes out look for a catch block and once catch block is uh, uh, there found then then it won't go in for loop again so if any problem any student any student has problem anytime anywhere then that student will make other student not to insert because it goes into the catch block directly so these are the two business use cases i told these are very much important and one more thing you remember that something called two phase commit protocol means everything should be successful or everything should get failed. In that case, this coding will get used. Till now, what we discuss? Combination of try catch. Inner catch will be the inside catch. We can have try catch, try catch, inside try catch, and everything we have seen two phase commit protocols, some business use cases. Now time comes for finally block. Remember. Finally, block will get executed always. The finally block is used when an important part of the code needs to be executed, as it is always getting executed, as just now I said. Even if exception occurs, finally block will get executed. Means exception occurred or doesn't occur, doesn't matter to finally block, finally block will always get executed. If we shut down the JVM, finally block stop from, exec from executing. But remember guys, 
many people think how to shut down a JVM. It is just system dot exit you need to write exit method of system class you need to use. But it's not built for finally method. Many people think that finally method will not get executed if we write system dot exit in a try block. It's correct. It's very correct. Absolutely correct. But system dot exit is only for shutting down a JVM. Or obviously after that, if you write system dot out dot print and Java by run, it won't print. Forget about going into the final block. System dot exit means nothing will happen there afterwards. Our execution will get stopped. Even finally block will get executed irrespective of you return some value from the try block. Even if you return something from try block, it is not going just outside, finally block will get executed. Let's say there are value you are returning from try block, then catch block, and then finally block. Don't get confused, finally block will still get executed. Normally, finally block contains the code to release resources like connections, input stream, output stream, like that. You can also write resources cleanup code inside the finalized method. You can see that in my garbage collector video. Finalized method is used uh, as it is getting involved before garbage collector runs, but it is preferable to use finally block instead of finalized method. If you write some code in finally block, it will get executed always. It will clean up resources. As you might have seen my, all of the videos which are under this series of uh, interview preparation and revision lectures, I'm covering interview questions as well. So here, try catch finally throw through. We have seen detail. Now let's focus on interview questions. First question may be: Can exception occurs in a catch block? Answer is yes. Can exception occurs in a finally block? Answer is yes. Can try finally combination allowed in Java? Many people think try catch finally should be there, but whether try and finally is allowed? Answer is yes. What is nested try catch block? You should be telling that inside try catch there is another try catch that is called a nested try catch block. You can see here. If try catch finally all three returns different values. This is new question. See here. All three returns different value. Which value will be returned? You can see here. Try catch finally. Try is returning 10. Catch is returning 20. Finally is returning 30. And I'm showing here in C where M1 uh, is getting called. What it will print? So it will print 30. Remember. Some people may ask you how to, how you can stop finally block. I already told system dot exit. Then they may ask you no uh, another any other option you have that you cannot call finally block. You should say I can have infinite for loop inside try block. Infinite for loop means it will never reach to it will never reach to finally block. So these are the interview questions which are very important. Hopefully you understood everything. Hopefully you can prepare on the basis of this video. Go right from the try to finally catch, finally throw throws and these are the interview questions. Thank you. You can read more about this in jbktutorials.com. You can test yourself on jbktest.com. Call us to join our classes on this number. You can see this number on screen. For more detail about our online as well as classroom classes, visit www.chahavakiran.com. Please give us comments. If you did not like this video or if you like this video, please share your feedback to us. We are welcoming that. We will try to improve on it. We will make more and more material if you give us encouragement. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for supporting us. Please subscribe my channel to get more and more videos like this. Thank you.